I'm super excited to share an amazing new feature available in Excel that enables you to create custom data types based on your own data using Power Query. If you're familiar with the built-in geography and stocks rich data types, then you'll know that data types organize related data into a single cell from which you can extract and reference the underlying fields using formulas. But now with Power Query, you can create your own rich data types, giving you a streamlined way to manage and consume your data by storing more than just one value or data type in a single cell. Mind blowing, I know. Now, before we get started, I need to make this clear. This feature is so new that only 50% of users on the Excel beta channel for Windows Microsoft 365 have it. And I just happen to be in the lucky 50% and I couldn't wait to share it with you. Let's take a look. To demonstrate this feature, I'm going to get this 2020 Tour de France data from Wikipedia. But keep in mind that you can use any data from anywhere to create your own custom data types. I'll start by copying the URL to my clipboard and then we'll go into Excel and on the data tab of the ribbon, I'm going to get data from the web. I'll just paste in the URL and click OK. Power Query finds all of the tables on that web page. Now I want the table called by starting number and in the right hand side we can see a preview of the data so I know that's the table that I want. I'll click transform data and that will open the query editor where I can create the data type. I'll start by removing the last column. We don't need that, it's empty. The other thing I want to do is filter out any of the riders that didn't start and didn't finish. And we can do this by filtering out all of the times that just have a hyphen. So in the filter for time, I'm going to go to the bottom and deselect the hyphen. Now we've removed those riders. I can change the position to a whole number. The other thing I want to do is rename any columns that have a dot in the title because the dot is an operator for accessing the data in data types. So let's rename this position and over on the far left we'll rename this number. Now I'm ready to create my data type. I want all of the columns so just holding down shift I'm going to select them all but you can just select the columns that you want. I'm going to go to the transform tab and we're going to create data type. Here I need to give my data type a name so I'll call it rider and the column that I want displayed is the rider's name. I'll click OK and there we have our data types. If I click on one you can see in the bottom a preview of the data for that particular rider. So their number, name, nationality, team, age, position and time. They're the columns I selected to create my data type. Now before we close and load it to Excel I'm going to give the query a better name. I'll call it riders. This will also be the name of the table containing my data type. And I'm ready to go to the Home tab and close and load to. And here I'm going to close and load to a table and we'll put it on the current worksheet. And now I have my riders table containing the custom data types. You can tell the data types because they have the data type icon to the left of the text. And if I hover over it, it flashes momentarily to encourage me to click it and I get the tooltip. If I click on the icon, it brings up the card for that cell with the data relating to this rider. The other thing we can do with data types is in the sort options, we can choose to sort by a field that isn't currently visible in the worksheet. For example, I could sort by number and we could sort say largest to smallest. And you can see now my data is sorted in descending order based on their number. I'm going to go back and just sort it A to Z. That's going to make more sense for my report that I'm going to create later. Now I can add fields to my table via this dialog. So for example, if I wanted to add their nationality, I could simply click the plus icon beside nationality. You can see it gives me the tooltip to extract it to the grid. Another way I can add fields to my table is via the icon here. Click on it and then choose which field you want. Another way we can add fields is using a formula. So I can select the data type cell and then use the dot operator and choose the field from the list. 
And because this is a table, the formula was automatically copied down and all I need to do is give the column a name. And lastly, we can add a field by simply typing the field name in the header. And you can see the table has recognized that this is a data type and it's auto completed the formula for me. Now, one thing to be aware of is that pivot tables can only reference data displayed in cells. They can't access the underlying rich data in the data types. So if you want to analyze the data in a pivot table, you first need to extract those fields into columns within the table. Now the benefit of data types is when it comes to referencing them in formulas. It enables you to build interactive reports like this. As I make a selection in the dropdown, you'll notice it contains a data type and the data in the report automatically updates because all of the formulas reference the data type I created with Power Query. Let's start from scratch and I'll show you the different formulas I used to build this report. So back in my demo file here, I've inserted the headers and formatting just to save some time. First, for my data validation list, I need to define a name for the rich data type. So let's start by selecting the data. I just want the names, I don't want the headers. And we'll define a name. We'll call it rider list. And you can see it refers to the riders table and the rider data type. So I'll click OK. Now back in the report, I can insert my data validation list. Here I want a list and it's called rider list. Click OK and let's choose one from the list. You can see it's a data type because it has the icon to the left of the name. Now I can use formulas with the dot operator to populate this data. So I want nationality and then age. You can type it in and it will auto complete and I want their number, position, and the time. Let's format all of this to left aligned. Next, I want to extract the rider's team name. I'll start by prefixing the result with team, and then we'll concatenate XLOOKUP to find the team name for the rider in this cell that we selected from the data validation list. So we're looking up the rider's name. Where are we looking at up? In the rider's table, in the data type rider. And the result I want returned is the team name. So this is again in the rider's table, in the rider data type, and I want the team column. Close XLOOKUP, and there's our team returned. Notice in the XLOOKUP, I first reference the data types in my riders table and then in the return array I reference the underlying rich data from the team column and it's the dot operator that allows me to specify the field that I want. So now that we understand how to reference the data let's extract the list of riders for the team and I want it based on their position. We'll start by sorting it and then I'll use filter to extract the position information. So again, we want to filter the riders table and the rider data type specifically for the position field. But I only want to include where the team is the same team as the selected rider in cell C3. So I'll close filter, close sort, press enter. It returns a spilled array of the position numbers for the team members sorted in ascending order. So now that I have the list of numbers, I can simply use XLOOKUP to return the riders' names. So XLOOKUP. Here I want to look up the array returned by filter. Now I'm selecting the whole array and notice Excel's automatically entered the hash spilled array operator. And that'll save me having to edit the formula when the array returned by filter changes, as it will, you'll see. I need to absolute the column reference because I'm going to use this formula again. I want to be able to copy it. The lookup array is the rider's position. And the returner array, in this case, is the rider's name. 
close parentheses on XLOOKUP, and it spills the results. So now that we have this formula, I'm just going to copy it and paste it here and edit it. So instead of name, I want time. This one, I want age. And this one, I want nationality. Now as a final touch, I can use conditional formatting to highlight the selected rider in the teams list. I'm selecting a few extra rows just to allow for other teams that have more riders. So on the home tab, I want to conditionally format based on a new rule. I need to use a formula. Let's just move it down here so we can see the cells. And here I want to check whether the value here is the same as the value here. Now the values in column E are text and the value for the selected rider in cell C3 is a rich data type. And these are not the same thing as far as Excel is concerned. I need to convert this rich data type to text and we can do that with a new function called value to text. Close parentheses on that. Now I need to remove the absolute reference for the row because I want it to evaluate every row, but I want it to stay fixed on column E. So we'll leave the absolute reference for the column and just remove it for the rows. In the formatting, I'm going to set the fill color to this bright yellow that's in keeping with my Tour de France theme. We'll click OK on that and OK on my conditional formatting. You can see it's found Adam Yates in the list. And if I choose a different team member, let's go down and choose one with a name further down the list. You can see it's updating accordingly. I hope you're excited about this new feature. There are so many applications from HR data to product data and more. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.